During the summer of 2023, we moved to a remote Scottish Hebridean island to be its only two residents along with our two pet sheep and pair of cats. These remote islands seem to retain an old-fashioned rhythm and a charm which we find encouraging us to live a more frugal and simple life, the way man was perhaps more intended to. We have an ancient stone cottage to restore, veggies to grow, livestock to build up, fish to catch and smoke, a boat to buy, and much more. Step back in time with us at the Scottish Isle. How many days of rain? Two, three. It's pretty wet out there. The, the bedroom fireplace was dripping this morning. It woke me up. Yeah, it woke me up as well. It was dripping last night. Uh, the, the rain drips through the chimney and if you have anything like positioned in the fireplace, like a box or whatever, it will drip straight on it and obviously it reverberates through the box. So yeah, it woke me up last night. But yeah, we've had about two, three days of rain now. And, and the last uh, 48 hours, it's nearly been non-stop. The humidity in here is insane, but well, we I did told, notice We were told that nobody complained about the humidity in here. Well, we're going to show you exactly how the humidity levels are in here. Um, I noticed something while we were setting up for this today. What? Look at the stone behind you. Yeah. Look at it more closely, like put your hand on it. It's wet. It's soaking wet. Oh, you are kidding me. Where is that coming from? It's coming from the chimney. So this is, this is why we need to re-render the chimney stack on the roof before we do any work to this wall. This is why the stone looks black. Because it's wet. I thought it was just the lights, the new lights that we've got. We've, look, look. It's wet to the touch. It just gets worse, doesn't it? It's like it's... Well, I mean, we know we, we, know we needed to do the chimney anyway, and that, that, sh that you know, should fix that. But, I mean, I don't know if the camera will pick up well, that look, how... how this, this, is, this is... You can see that it's wet. I've never seen this before. It's obviously just... It's seeping in from the inside of the chimney, right? seeping through the stone and it's just because of all the rain we've had now that we've noticed actually it's it's wet it's we, not soot on the stone i mean we still need to clean the we still need to clean all this sooty mortar with the steamer it's it's when the wind blows the rain in a certain direction that's when this happens that's when it comes down the chimney we get torrential rain all the time but it it this is the first time I've seen this like this in the, in the year that we've now been here. 
I mean, th this is this is literally wet. This is not condensation. This is water coming from somewhere. Oh, here. It's all wet here. Yeah. So when the wind blows the rain in a certain way, it's finding its way down the chimney and like I said, it just gets worse. Well, I don't know how I don't know how people have live, lived here with it being so damp. But how could you put up with this? Well, we're fixing it. But anyway, Mandy, who um, used to be a lady that used to visit the island with her family, visit the cottage with her family, she says she remembers it always having a damp smell. And no wonder. Well, look at this. Now we bought it. I bought this, which is a, a dehumidifier for the office. It basically has to sit in the room where the books are and it will do its best to get the humidity out of that room because the books and the records of mine, they need protecting in some way. But we thought what we'd do is we'd put this in here for now, but we just want to show you the levels of humidity that we're dealing with. <laughs> so that's 90% humidity in this room right now. Just turn it off. Um, 90% humidity, yeah? yeah? Well, isn't that 10% off from being in a swimming pool? <laughs> That's, yeah, pretty much. Like, like if this house was in a, in a swimming pool right now, it would be 100% humidity. <laughs> you can certainly feel it in your lungs today. Come here, let me show you the back I'm, wall. I'm, you know, I have to be honest with you, I'm not laughing about this. I am not happy about this at all. Because, I mean, seriously, 90% humidity in this room... We've got water dripping off the walls. And even though we're here to sort this out, it's, it's doing my brain in. It really is starting to do my brain in. Let me show you this back wall. You can see really now that we've had so much rain, the extent of the water ingress here. This uh, lime is drying. Um, it's just drying slowly. Even the back wall, it's drying. And the same on the hearth. but. All the way along this wall, it's just... And now we know why the hearth was damp. Right? I'm, I'm having a hard time dealing with this, I have to tell you that. I, I am. So I don't really want to say anything because I've got nothing good to say about it. Well, I, I'm, I'm not... I, when we I can't come up against problems, I've, I find it difficult, you know, because we don't know what we're doing until we research it and... And then we can get a plan in place and I feel better again. And, and that's one of the reasons this refurb is taking so long because we have to figure things out as we go along. And everyone knows old houses, they throw things at you. But yeah, living in 90% humidity is uh, not acceptable. <laughs> well, it's, yeah. The, the thing is, yeah, it's only this time of year. Yeah, that's true. It's not like this, this, this for me is the worst time of year to be on this island. And that's from the experience that I had last year. It is so wet during this time. And this continues right the way through until the end of September. And then it disappears. So you really only have it for about two and a half months. Yeah, and, and that's why we thought once we dug out the trench, which was the first thing that we did, took out all the vegetation, that's why we thought we'd, we'd pretty much crack the damp problem because the rainy season stopped. But... It's not, it's not the case. No. Um, and you know, your home's supposed to be your refuge. So I guess that's, that's one of the reasons why you're having a hard time dealing with it. Nobody knew the extent to, of the problems in this house until we took the walls back. knitting. This is, this is called Shetland Lace. Um, can you see it? Yeah. It's a style of knitting where you it, it deliberately make holes basically and it, it's some of the Shetland Lace is um, it, it's incredibly fine, incredibly intricate and fine. It's beautiful stuff. Um, this is going to be a, a shawl this is the border of the shawl. You see why it's, it's why it's called lace, right? But um, my mum 
my mum taught me to knit when I was um, a girl and I stopped knitting till I think probably I was in my late 20s again from girlhood. I guess, it, it, you know, you go through that phase where it's not cool to knit. Only grannies knit. And then you reach a certain age and you realise that actually it's a really useful skill to have. And the fruit of your own hands, right? It is when you need a sweater and a, a woolly hat. Yeah, it's... I think it's a nice connection to our ancestors to be working with our hands like this. My grandmother used to make actual lace. I've got some of her, got some of her lace. I don't really know, I, you know, I, I wouldn't throw it away, but I don't really know what you would use it for. You know, doilies and things like that. They're not really the, the thing now, are they? Nope. But, yeah, women get knitting. <laughs> Like so many other Western traditions, knitting is believed to have its origins in ancient Mesopotamia, and the tribes in their migrations west into Europe and abroad to the four corners of the earth, brought the skill with them as they settled in a new wilderness. In medieval Europe, knitting was ostensibly commonplace, and in Scotland and Ireland it was seen as womenfolk's daily work in order to provide clothing for her family, and something learned from girlhood. Being such a mobile task, knitting was done anywhere and on the go, and the women of Shetland in particular were and still are renowned for speed knitting, so practised are their hands at the craft. Shetland, alongside having native sheep with long soft fleeces perfect for making into yarn, became famous for its knitted lace, which could be so fine that an entire shawl could be pulled through the wedding ring of its maker, Queen Victoria was known to have been very fond of Shetland lace, having been gifted some by an islander. In the medieval era, Hanseatic traders bought knitwear from Shetland, and for many centuries Dutch fishermen visited the isles to buy woolen goods from women to wear at sea. Of course, the craft is still alive and well all over the world, and as we knitters click it with our needles, we can experience a link to our lineage of grandmothers who lived quietly and celebrated the works of their hands. We can remember them and think of the old oracle taught to King Lemuel by his mother, which goes in part, an excellent wife is more precious than jewels. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Such a fitting tribute to our grandmothers, who worked hard to clothe their families. I'm interested to uh, to see how this works. Well, I mean, your your interest is in between the stone. Mine's actually on the stone itself. I, I think the stone's going to dry out. I think it's going to dry out, and well, I think it's got it is going to have some soot staining still, but it, the the colour's going to lighten up as it dries, which is going to take a long time actually. Um, so but, this, you know, this this is water damage. This is not soot like we think it is. I think this is water. I think this is where the water's coming through and it's, it's, it's spreading out. But if you, look at, if you look at the darker patches, it's where all the water is. Look up there. I think it's both. I think it's sensible to assume it's both. But this is for, well, as well as steam cleaning, <laughs> bathroom and things like that, which is going to be a, a joy and probably a horror to begin with. Um, well, when, when you see how much muck comes off oh, of you. Don't. <laughs> uh, the joys of living on an island. So I've seen high pressure uh, steam cleaners cleaning soot off of brickwork and 
uh, render and mortar that has had soot damage from fire, right? And it works. But is this handheld one, which is only four bars rather than 120 bars, going to actually do anything? Mm. Let's add some more moisture into the yeah, room, shall we? Yeah, that's what we definitely need. Well, look, it's coming straight off. It's definitely lightened up. Look at that. I don't want to look at it. Right, let's pick a really dark spot. Oh, the just pick the darkest we can get up there, can we? Well, that was the darkest spot. Well, what about all this here. in here? All that in there is the darkest spot. All right. I mean, I only plan on doing it on the dark bits, not on the whole wall. Okay, just... You're not going to know until it dries out, but... So well, I reckon if we dig it out a couple of mils and steam clean it, it's not going to stain. I hope. Mm. Thank you. 